Hello. Good afternoon, Bhante. Okay, good afternoon. You can see me now? Yes, Bhante. Okay. I like you to hear the stance that today I'm a couple of minutes late. Uh, anyway, uh, listen to this uh, chanting. E sang sam pan si la nam ap ma de viha viha sam danya vimutta nam marom pandang navin deti Okay, listen to it again, once again. The stanza in the screen is different to what it is uh, utter. This is the last week's stanza, Bhante. What? The stanza. Okay, now you have the right one. Chanting is different? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's the good. Uh... Now you can see that? Yes, Bhante. Okay. You did did you hear the chanting? We did, but that uh, at that time there was a different stanza, so if you could replay it, that would be good. Okay. Now you want you want to re me to repeat that? Yes, please, Bhante. Okay. Thank you. There's on some Okay. Te sang sam pan si la na ap ma de viha vina sam danya vimutta na marom pangam navin deti. Now is it clear? Yeah? Yes, Bhante. Okay. Uh, this is the meaning. Te sang of those sampan silanam endowed with virtue. Pamada Vihari Nang, who live heedfully, mindfully, Samad complete Anya Vimuttanang, who are free through deep knowledge, Maro Mara Magang, the path, Na Vindati cannot find. This, this is very beautiful stanza with deep meaning. Uh, the meaning is, Mara cannot find the path of those endowed with virtue who live heedfully and who are freed through complete and deep knowledge. This is the description of an arahant. When Arahant passes away, nobody can see the path they took after they are passing away. When ordinary people die, Mara can see the path they took 
to take rebirth. But when an arahant passes away, nobody can see where he was born. That is the meaning. Let me repeat the meaning again. Te sang of those, sampan means complete. End out, end out. Sila means morality. Those who have completed their morality, Sila, and, and who have who lived heedfully, that means who have lived mindfully, and uh, and who are free from a uh, true deep wisdom. Anya Anya means here. Anya means wisdom, knowledge. Vimuttana liberated through knowledge, through wisdom. The maro, the maro, maggang, maggang means path, na vindati, do not uh, see, do not understand. Now, I want you to understand the meaning of it. Uh, let me see the, okay. This stanza, the, the foundation of this stanza, or the, the story behind the stanza is this. Near at the uh, root of bottom of Isigili mountain, there was a, a rocky flat, plateau area. Uh, there was a monk called Godhika. Godhika. This monk he, he strived very hard and uh, he was perfect in his morality and he made great effort and meditate. So he's the foundation of, of the success of meditation is morality. So with this moral behavior, with perfect morality, he practiced meditation. And uh, attain jhanas. Attainment of jhana is a very wonderful attainment, but that would not destroy your defilements. It is called temporary liberation. Temporary liberation. And after some time, uh, since his defilements were not totally destroyed, uh, at any jhana, you suppress your defilements. When you come out of jhana, the defilements will uh, sneak or flood the mind, come, come back to the mind. Then again he attained it. Second time also he uh, gained jhanas and he lost it. Uh, then he practiced jhana again. Like this he practiced seven times. He practiced jhana. Then this monk was very, very upset. He checked his mind and he tried to find out anything wrong in him. He found nothing wrong in him. He was perfect in morality. But he, at, at the end, Jhanas, he could not go beyond that. 
and attainment of jnana is not the end of it, end of our uh, practice. So he thought I tried seven times. I could not attain uh, enlightenment. I attained jhana and I lost it. And he said, if I die, uh, without attaining enlightenment, uh, I will be reborn somewhere. Maybe in, even though I have attained jhana, sometimes it is possible that I might be reborn in a woeful, painful state of existence. Then he thought, instead of uh, living with this harmful thought, it will be better for me to kill myself. Commit suicide. So he thought, when I attain jhana, before I lose the jhana, while in jhana, I must kill myself. As soon as he had this thought, he thought, I must take my uh, razor, you know, shaving razor. This is one of the items of the eight requisites. Atta Parikara. Reza is one of them. And he uh, he had it with him. And he thought, this time I attained jhana, eight times. Seven times I lost. And uh, while in the jhana, my defilements are all suppressed. With, in that state, I must die. So that I will not be born in a bad place, even if I be born, I will be born in higher realm. So, uh, he has no any hope to live. Uh, and, However, some individual, Buddha said, when you practice meditation, you attain enlightenment in this life, uh, in your early age, middle age, and old age, even just before passing away, you may attain enlightenment. So Godika thought, uh, I don't want to live, I will pass away. He did not know that he was going to attain enlightenment just before he passes away. And he thought of committing suicide. That instant, Mara may thought, this is a very tricky point, Mara thought, if Godiga passes away now, perhaps before attaining, before he passes away, he might attain enlightenment, as the Buddha has already mentioned. Perhaps just the one moment before he passes away, he might attain enlightenment. I don't want him to attain enlightenment. I must interrupt. I must do something about it. So he immediately appeared before the Buddha and said, Sir, one of your disciples is going to pass away. And uh, uh, you must go and interfere and stop him passing away, from passing away. Uh, then the Buddha knew that this is Mara, and uh, Buddha did not do anything. Buddha knew that that instant, Venerable Godika 
cut his throat. At that instant, while he, he simultaneously, while cutting his throat, throat, he contemplated on the pain, the practice, uh, Vedana and Vipassana, mindfulness of feelings, and every fraction of a second, he focused on the mindfulness of feeling. As he said, he was practicing, his morality was good, and practiced meditation, and he was heedful, mindful, and uh, therefore, now mindfulness has come to a climax. At that moment, he is feeling eroses, eros, feeling of his cutting his when this nerves were cutting. Uh, feeling arises. He contemplated on feeling, and along with the uh, along with the contemplation of the feeling, that instant it happened both of, both cutting his head off and attaining enlightenment simultaneously took place. And Buddha knew that before Mara appeared before the Buddha, Venerable Gothic has already cut his head off and attain enlightenment. So, <clears throat> then Buddha said to, there were some monks, and said, because, let us go and see the body of Godhika. And it is said when the Buddha was going to see Godhika, uh, since there was no uh, rebirth consciousness called Patisandhi Vinyana. Patisandhi Vinyana. So Mara came and uh, uh, he went to see the Buddha and gave this message and returned to see both the Gotika. And he, he uh, could not go see Gotika's relinking consciousness anywhere. Even though Mara is very powerful, he won't, uh, he could not see what happened to Godika. He thought Godika was reborn somewhere, so he was uh, looking for it. When the Buddha went there, Buddha saw a cloud, dark cloud, around uh, Venerable Godika's body. And that was uh, Mara looking for Gothika's uh, relinking consciousness. So Buddha said, "Look, because look at this uh, cloud, dark cloud. This is Mara looking for Gothika's relinking consciousness." I think then. To explain this, Buddha said this stanza. Uh, so, when th this means, uh, without taking too much time, when all the factors come together, one can attain enlightenment instantly. Some people ask, can one attain enlightenment instantly? We must say yes, but they have to fulfill all the requirements. What are the requirements? Their morality must be perfect, mindfulness practice must be perfect, their effort must be strong. When these three factors come together, Venerable Gaudi has 
samadhi, sila, samadhi, and panya. These are the three pillars of the success. Three pillars of success. Sila, samadhi, panya. Venerable Gautika, sila was perfect. His concentration, because he was practicing jhana uh, seven times, uh, and eight times uh, he attained enlightenment, because his sila is complete, samadhi is complete, and wisdom is complete, because he was practicing mindfulness. When these three are complete, one can attain enlightenment. Because the, the noble ones, Appamadu Viharanam, Appamadu Viharanam uh, end out with uh, heatfulness, live with heatfulness, sitting, standing, walking, lying down, talking, in all postures. Major postures and minor postures, they are called uh, iriyapata, khuddha kiriyapata. Major uh, uh, postures are sitting, standing, walking, lying down. Khuddha kiriyapata means uh, minor postures like bending, uh, standing, uh, eating, drinking. Uh, urinating, defecating, uh, talking, wearing robes, taking off, all these are activities. Uh, when one focuses the mind with mindfulness on these activities, focus the mind on these activities with mindfulness, then that person's uh, insight, wisdom, naturally slowly, continuously grows. When it continuously grows, that person doesn't need too long to attain enlightenment because all these things came to fruition, came to climax, peak. When all of them come to peak, then attainment of uh, enlightenment is possible. That is what will happen to uh, go thither. And this is sometimes uh, controversial because uh, how can one attain enlightenment uh, by committing suicide? This uh, virtual commit su committing suicide. Now, in this case, Godika's situation uh, was something very, very special. And this also is an example of how the Dhamma is akalika, unaffected by time. That means the, the attainment is so quick that you have no time to calculate by seconds, minutes, hours, days, and so on. Because when everything is complete, results happen very quickly. So, meanwhile, when the <coughs> uh, was practicing all this, uh, completed his moral practice and then attain enlightenment. So, this is a very encouraging, not discouraging statement. Uh, why is that? One must make effort to develop one's morality concentration and wisdom. And uh, these are the three, what we will cardinal factors of the Noble Eightfold Path. What are they? 
understanding, mindfulness, and effort. Samadhiti, Samasati, and Samavayam. Right understanding, right effort, and right mindfulness. And these are the three things Venerable Gaudika, Gaudika developed to attain enlightenment. So he did attain enlightenment. So now once again, I like you to hear, this is our uh, way of uh, uh, ending this class. I like you to recite this along with the first listen to the stanza again and when, while listening to the stanza again focus the mind on each word very very attentively pay attention uh, it's not the sound itself but the meaning <laughs> Okay, that is his beautiful voice because he's young. Now listen to my old voice. <laughs> and try to repeat. I recite it line by line and you repeat after me. Te sang sampanna sila nang Te sang again Te sang sampanna sila nang. Te sang sampanna sila nang. Appa madha vihari nang. Appa madha vihari nang. Samadanya vimutta nang. Maro Magana Vindati Okay, here Samadanya Samad Samad when these two words join together Sam Anya D is added. That is the Pali grammar. According to Pali grammar, Samma Anya becomes Samma Danya. Join together. Appamadu uh, Vyarana is plural noun. Samma Danya Vimuttana noun. Uh, okay, Sampana Silanam again, the whole word together is a noun. Maru Magam Navindati. Okay, now uh, I recite the whole stanza once, entire stanza, and try to repeat it. Look at the screen. Te sang sampan sila nang appamada viharinang 
Maheli. Tesam sampana silanam apamata viharinam samatana vimutanam maro magam navinduti. Very good. Tinuri. Tesam sampana silanam Pamada viharanam Samatanya vimutanam Maro magamna vindati. Very good. I think everybody is excited today. That's very good. That's how we have to study. This <coughs> not only learn how to pronounce Pali. But also we learn the meaning of each word, plus the story behind it, and the moral we can, the lesson we can learn from the this from the story, the dhamma, dhamma lesson we can learn from the story. So these are the uh, segments, parts of this lesson. I think we complete it. Normally we are supposed to have only. 30 minutes. Today we spent more than 40 minutes and now I think it is good that we stop here and uh, do meditation. Okay? Okay. Let's go for let's go to meditation. Okay? <clears throat> Okay. Um, okay. okay, you can see it. Yes, Bante. Yes. Okay. All right. Now I recite the passages and you listen and uh, we meditate for at least uh, 20 minutes. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, being near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another, as a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child. Even so, towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment. Whether standing, walking, sitting, or lying down, when or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desire for sensual pleasures. One comes never again to birth in the womb. Okay, with this metta thought, in background, sit up in a comfortable posture and breathe slowly, lung full of breath. And then breathe out slowly until all the air in your lungs is gone. So that next in the next breath, 
you can breathe lung full of breath and breathe out all the air in your lungs. And do this very slowly, mindfully. Be mindful of every tiny moment of feeling is changing. Every thought is feeling, changing. Every consciousness is changing. Every intention, attention is changing. They are constantly changing all the time whether we are aware of them or not. This is happening all the time. This is a universal truth whether the Buddhas come into existence or not. This established Dhamma, established truth exists. What is this established Dhamma? Established truth is impermanence. It's taking place all the time is in us, around us, with us. The difference is that we are not aware of it. Now we try to become aware of it in order to make it easy, we breathe very slowly so that awareness of impermanence will be very clear. Okay? With that, I let you do practice at least for 20 minutes. Uh, I will ring the bell and uh, you continue the practice even though I end it. And I have to finish all this at 4 o'clock for I have another meeting. Okay?
by means of this meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish, may I join always with the wise, until the time I attain Nibbana, may the suffering be free from suffering, may the fear struck be free from fear, may the grieving be free from grief, so too may all beings be, from the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Friends, we start our uh, meditation with metta. Now we end meditation with metta. This is a very wonderful practice. Even though I rang the bell, end my part, if you have time in a posture and in since you are in meditation mood, continue your practice. I have another meeting right now at four o'clock, so I have to end my part right now. So once again, I want to wish all those who are suffering in hospitals, taken care of by very compassionate doctors, nurses, hospital staff, may they recover very soon, Time, find time to practice Dhamma, meditation, and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. All the doctors, nurses, hospital staff who have sacrificed their comfort, risking their life to take care of these people, may they, may they also find time to practice Dhamma, meditation, and attain liberation from samsaric suffering. May all those who have lost their loved ones and are grief-stricken, may they all be free from grief and find time to practice meditation and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all others who are in various rebel sports, war zones, poverty stricken discriminations, and so forth, victims of all kinds of problems, may they find time to practice meditation and liberate from them, themselves from suffering, and wish never to happen those difficulties for them. And all others, in all ten directions, be well, happy, and peaceful. Friends, as I repeatedly mention always, that when we practice metta, mindfulness, it is we who benefit, not those who do not practice. And therefore, we try to practice and keep our mind calm, peaceful, relaxed, full of metta, full of wisdom, insight, mindfulness. And may you all be well, happy and peaceful. Okay? Thank you, Bhante. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Teruan Saranai, Bhante. Subalu, Tauru, Dakweva, Bhante. Ah, I say Veva. Thank you, Bhante. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Dr. Tanaka, you are in Japan or Sri Lanka or India? Anyway. Today, Indian Tamil New Year, Devante, from India. Eh? Tamil New Year, from India. You? New Year, Happy New Year, today. New Year. Ah, thank you very much, thank you very much. Same to you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes, somebody came from New Jersey and gave me New Year Dhana today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Everyone, sir, and I want to.